CC family, it's Dawn Marie with Custom Comfy Crochet. And yes, I am back again with another mask because I have got inundated with questions and comments and just needing help and all kinds of stuff. And I've and so much, by the way, enjoyed getting to know all of you guys. It's been wonderful. And I just wanted to, um, first of all, I'm this is a beginner a completely beginner crochet mask video. So if you are not a beginner, um, this might go too slow for you. And please note that I have one uh, mask video that's more for advanced uh, crocheters below in the description. I also have a video for um, uh, complete beginners um, and learning how to crochet. And that teaches you how to hold a hook and stuff like that. So this video is not gonna teach you how to hold a hook and tension and things like that, but I am gonna go much slower. I'm gonna explain the stitches better. I'm going to explain how to actually sew on the back because I've had several comments about that. So yeah, and we're also just gonna address a lot of the questions that I've gotten. Okay, so just to start off with some of the questions, um, how do I make one for a man? That's been often the thing and um, one of the questions that I've got and really it's the same. It just may need to be a little bit wider. So for my original pattern for this mask, um, it calls for about 10 to 11 rows for a female. So if your um, significant other or a male in general has a bigger face or head than you or may have a beard or something like that, then you will have to decide how many rows that you need. But I would guess that the top you would need for a man is 12 to 13, okay? Another question I've gotten is a lot about filters. What can we use as a filter? Is the filter that you talked about in your first video safe? Now I will tell you from the get go, and I've said this in my other videos as well, I am not a doctor, I am not a professional. I will leave links below um, for the CDC and their instructions on masks. This is just something that I felt was safe for my family. And so yeah, that's what I'm doing. However, the filters that I'm using are 3M filtrate filters, okay? And I will also talk a little bit about that in the description box below. So if you wanna learn more about that, you can look below. Um, people have asked me about coffee filters, oh, vacuum cleaner bags, um, let's see, uh, just cotton material. And you know what my thought is, and this is just my thought and I'm not a professional, whatever you have, whatever you can afford, whatever makes you feel safe during a pandemic, which guys, that's a lot to take on. So if there is anything that makes you feel safe and it's not doing you harm or anyone else harm, then by all means, do whatever you can to make yourself stress-free, okay? That's my go-to on that. Um, then I've heard, okay, and the problem with the backing, not knowing how to put sew on the backing, so we're gonna address that today. Um, also, I've got a lot of comments about, I'm a beginner, I need you to go slower, and so, hence, this video. Um, I've gotten some questions about under two years old. Um, I am not making a video for under two years old because the CDC specifically says for anyone under two not to wear one. However, if it makes you feel better, if whatever, you know, if you want to do that, you can. However, I'm not going to do a video on that. Um... Oh, is it washable? Okay, so we're going to talk about that. All yarn that you get on the back of the label gives you washing directions, what can be done with it, and so forth and so on. Most yarns can be washed and dried, so follow the instructions of whatever yarn you use. And then I've gotten the question a lot about what type of yarn is best. Is cotton best? Is a um a uh, synthetic best is acrylic, you know, I mean, wool. I mean, there's just so many different kinds of yarn that you can use. And we're gonna address that today too, because for me, after all these videos and all this time and having three kids myself, um, two of which are essential workers, um, I have found what's best for us. And especially now that we're moving into summer, I wanna move away from those heavy synthetic um, uh, 
yarn because it is a little bit heavy on the face. However, if you live in a winter um, climate or a colder climate, then that might, might work just fine for you. Or you might not care, period. Masks are hot. I don't care what kind you're using. They're hot, okay? So, but that's another question I get a lot, and we're going to talk about that today, okay? Because the yarn I'm using today is the best yarn out of all that I have found to do a mask with, okay? So let's get into that. Also, just so you know, I will put a timestamp below of when the actual crochet starts in case you don't want to hear my yakking. Okay, so that will be below. Okay, guys, so the yarn I'm using today is called Kobu, and I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. If I'm not, you guys can correct me in the comments below, as I'm sure that you will. But this is a Lion brand yarn. It is a lightweight yarn. It's a three. Um... And I'm sorry, I've got a new light, so my camera is having trouble adjusting, but it's a, a lightweight yarn. So normally we would use a four, possibly, in most of our projects. This is a three. It calls for a four millimeter hook. It is called, I'm so sorry it's not wanting to focus. I'm looking for pale pink. And they have all kinds of different colors in this. I did find this at Walmart online. So it was shipped to my house and um, it was on sale. So um, you get 232 yards, which can make a lot of masks. Um, and it is 51% cotton and 49% rayon from bamboo. So that's really cool. It is machi machine washable and dryable. So this can be washed and dried. So this is what I was talking about. You don't have to use this yarn, but I had so many comments about what yarn was best and so forth and so on that I wanted to explain to you what I found was best. This is the best. It's the lightest. It's even lighter with the backing on it for the filter to fit in, okay, with the removable filter. Um, so yeah, it's great and it's washable and dryable, okay? So um, that's what I'm using and I'm using a four millimeter hook um, and this is my four millimeter hook or a size G. And this is the name of it. It's a wooden hook. Works good with my corporal tunnel. And you are going to need a darning needle or as some people call it, a yarn needle. And this is what this looks like. Okay. So that, and that is to sew in, that's to sew in your ends, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. And this is where I was talking about, I'm gonna go a lot slower. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make a slip knot. And again, please remember, if you don't know the basics of crochet, like how to make a slip knot, how to hold your um, crochet hook, or about tension and so forth, please check out my beginner video, okay? Because while I am gonna go slow and explain the stitches better, there still may be some things that you need to know. But okay, so we're gonna make a slip knot. And then we're going to chain 33. So to chain, I'm gonna simply pull my yarn through the loop. Just like this. Okay, so we've chained our 33, and now we're going to go into the second chain from the hook, okay? So if we're looking at this, we see that our loop is on our hook. We're not gonna count that. These are the chains, okay? So we're not gonna go into this one, which by the way, would be really hard to do anyway. We're gonna go into this next one right here, okay? And we're gonna go right into that. and we're going to do a single crochet. So to do a single crochet, you're gonna go into your next available stitch, pull up your yarn, you have two loops, go through both loops. So that was our second one and we need five. 
So there's three. four and five. Okay. Now, if you need to pause or rewind or slow anything down, you can do that all in your settings and, and that might work out great for you. Okay. But now we have five single crochets and now we need eight half double crochets. So to do a half double crochet, you're going to yarn over, which means in crochet terms, you're putting your yarn over your hook. Then you're going into your next available stitch. You're pulling up your yarn. And then you have three loops on your hook. You're gonna go through all three. So there's one. two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight half double crochets. Okay. Now you're going to do six double crochets. So to do a double crochet, you yarn over like you just saw me do, just like that. You're gonna go into your next available stitch, pull up your yarn, you have three loops on your hook. You're gonna go through your first two, and then you're gonna go through your second two, and that's a double crochet. Now remember, we need six, so let's do that again. Yarn over, go into your next stitch, pull up your yarn, you have three loops, go through two, and then go through two. All right, so that's two, There's three, four, five, and six. And now you need eight half double crochets again. So again, to do a half double crochet, you're going to yarn over, go into your next available stitch, and I'm gonna get really close so you can see this. So you're going right in between there. So in every little chain, you see kind of like a little X. So you're going right through the top of that. And we're going to do the half double crochet I showed you how to do. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then you're going to do five single crochets again, just like you did at the beginning. So you're going to go into your next available stitch and you're going to put a single crochet. One, two, three, four, and five. 
Then you're going to chain one and turn so your work. So you've chained one and you've turned your work. And now we're gonna do the same thing we just did in our next row. So, but I'm gonna go through it with you once again, okay? So you're gonna go into your net, your first available stitch, which will be right here, okay? So I want you to see you have your chain one, then you have your loop on your hook, then you have this first available stitch right here. So I want you to go right into there and put a single crochet. And remember, we need five. So there's one, two, three, four, and five. Then you're going to do eight half double crochets. You're going to yarn over, go into your next stitch, pull up your yarn. You have three loops on your hook. Go through all three loops. That's your first half double crochet. And then again, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, and now we're gonna work into those double crochets. So you're going to yarn over and we're going to do six double crochets. So go into your next available stitch and we're going to do a double crochet. Again, that's yarning over, going into your next available stitch, pulling up your yarn. You have three on your hook, go through two, go through two. So that was our second one. three, four, five, and six. Okay, now we're going to do eight half double crochets again. So again, yarn over, go into your next available stitch, and just so I can show you real quick in case you are really new to this. You're working under both of these loops up here at the top. So if you can turn your work and look at the top and you will see these two loops right here, one and two, the front and the back loops, okay? You're working underneath those, just like this, going under both loops. So we've done our six double crochets and now we're gonna go into our half double crochets. So you're gonna yarn over and we need eight of them. So yarn over, go through your next stitch. You've got three loops on your hook, go through all three. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, and now you need five single crochets. So one, two, three, four, and five. Now remember, this last one can be hard to get into. Turn it over on its side so you can see the two loops at the top, okay? And then you're gonna go under both of those loops for your last single crochet, just like that. Okay, so we've done two rows and you can see that it's developing that mass pattern. You just kinda go, ooh, and then go around, okay? So for this yarn and for this hook, 
You need about um, 11 rows for a female, 10 to 11 rows for a female, um, possibly more for a male, so maybe 12 to 13. So we've done two rows. So you're going to need to, for a, a adult lady, you're probably going to need um, nine more rows, okay? So I want you to complete that and then you come back. So just, just like we've been doing, chain one, turn your work, and then you're gonna restart just what we've done for these last two rows. And you're gonna keep doing that back and forth, okay? Don't forget to chain one and turn, all right? So you go ahead and do that and then we'll meet back up again and I'm gonna show you how to do um, the flap for the back for the insert, okay? Okay, so to start the flap for the back, we're going to do a slip knot. And you're going to chain 23. One, two, three, four, five, and 23. Okay, and now what you're going to do is just like before, you're gonna you're going to be working into the second chain from the hook. So remember, this is our loop on our hook, and then we can't work in that one. We're going into work into this one. All right, and the first thing that we're going to do is put a half double crochet there. So you're going to yarn over, go into this this stitch here, pull up your yarn. You have three loops on your hook. Go through all three. Okay. Then you're gonna need eight of these. So we just did one, so we need seven more. Six, seven, and eight. And then you're going to do six double crochets. So remember, we need to yarn over, go into our next available stitch. We've got three loops on our hook. Go through the first two, then you have two again, and go through those two. So that's our double crochet. So there's one. two, three, four, five, and six. And now we need eight half double crochets to finish this row off. So you're gonna yarn over, Go into your next available stitch, pull up your yarn, go through all three loops. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Then you're going to chain one and turn your work. Then you're going to repeat just what you just did again, but this time it looks a little bit different because you're not working on a chain from below. You're working right here from the top of these little loops right here. So again, you wanna go under these loops. So the first thing we're gonna do is start with those eight half double crochets. So we're gonna go right into our first stitch and we're gonna go through all those three loops. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, and eight. And then again, you're going to do six double crochets. So yarn over, go into your next stitch, pull up your yarn, go through two, go through two. So there's one, There's two, there's three, four, five, and six. And now to finish off the row, you need eight half double crochets. So yarn over, go into the next stitch, pull up your yarn, go through all three loops. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then remember on this last one, you might have to turn your work just a little bit to see those two loops right there. And you're gonna work under both of those loops and do your eighth half double crochet, okay? So you're going to do that. Now, if you did, um, 11 rows for your female version, then you need 10 rows of this. And the same with a male, if you did 13 rows, then you need 12. You just need one row less than what you did for your actual front of your mask, okay? And remember, don't forget to chain one and turn your work and just keep repeating each row, okay? So then we're going to come back in just a minute when you finish that, and I'm going to show you how to sew this back flap onto the mask, okay? okay? So once you finish that flap right there for the backing, I want you to leave a very long piece of yarn there. Um, and if you didn't, that's okay. You can still pull in the yarn. It's no big deal. But try to leave at least one long piece on each side. Like for this one, I didn't leave one long enough either. So I'm going to show you how to work that in. But we're going to start with the one that we did leave really long to begin with. All right. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it on to my darning needle. So I'm going to thread it on to, or you might call it a yarn needle. I'm gonna thread it in here just like this, okay? So there we've got that. Now I'm gonna pull over the mask that we have finished and I'm gonna turn it over just like that. Really doesn't matter, you know, up or down, it's the same. And then you're going to line this mask up. Sorry, I hit the camera. You're going to line this mask up and you can see it fits perfectly right in here into there where the, the bottom of the mask is and up at the top, okay? So basically what you're gonna do, oh, my yarn came off. Let me re-thread this or re-yarn uh, this, <laughs> okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to line this up with the five single crochets over, okay? And I made this pattern this way so it would fit perfectly. So I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, and five. So into the sixth one is where I'm going to start sewing on my back flap here, okay? So one, two, three, four, five. So what I'm doing is I'm going under both loops, okay? So this is what the side looks like. I'm turning it just slightly and I'm going under both loops. And this is still attached to my piece here. And then I'm gonna line it up with this first one here. And then I'm just going to go through just like that, okay? And then I'm going to go on to my next one. So I'm gonna go to my next stitch. I'm gonna go under both loops. And then I'm gonna go under both loops up here. And again, and through these loops 
and through these loops. And again, right through here and right through there. Just like that. And you're just gonna keep doing that all the way to the end, making sure that it lines up the best it can. Now remember, it doesn't have to be, if you make a little mistake or anything, you know, this is no big deal. If you, you know, miss a loop or, you know, you can still keep going. It's gonna look great when you're done. You're just going in and out, back and forth. Okay. You just want to make sure that you are going over five on this side as well by the time you get down there. And it should line up perfectly. But if it doesn't, like I said, it's no big deal. So let's just keep doing this top portion together. Okay, so let's count over and see if we've done a good job going along here, okay? So one, two, three, four, five. So we should be landing right here. So we've done a great job. That's exactly where we should be. So I'm just gonna make sure to get this last one. And it came off my darning needle. This is such a lightweight yarn, it wants to come right out of my my big darning needle here, okay? And so now what I'm gonna do is I have this piece left and it needs to be worked in so that this never comes undone. And so the rule of thumb is, is that you go in three times and it'll never come undone. So all I'm gonna do is simply go through to the back side. So I'm gonna put my needle through here because I don't want anyone to see me working through my stuff. So I'm gonna go through the back. I'm gonna pull it tight but not too tight. And then I'm gonna start working it back through these stitches in the back, okay? So there's one, two, three, and I might just do one more. Okay, and now I can cut off. All right, and so now we're gonna move to the other side. All right, now remember for this side, I didn't leave a very long piece here, so there's really not enough to work in. So in case you did that, which a lot of people do, and sometimes I do, I'm gonna show you how to pull in some new yarn, okay? So I'm just gonna take a piece of yarn. I'm gonna make sure it's about, I don't know, about a foot, foot and a half long. I'm going to thread it on to my needle, just like that. And then I'm gonna go all the way to the other side to the end, and I'm going to make a slip knot, just like this, okay? And we're gonna leave it like that because we're gonna work into that to make sure that it never comes undone. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing we did for the other side, we're gonna do on this side, we're gonna count over five, okay? So let's count over five. I'm gonna start from over here so you can see it better. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. So we wanna work in right here, okay? So I'm just gonna put my finger there and I'm gonna bring in my yarn over here and then I'm gonna go through both sides. When I do that, your slip knot is gonna come right there, 
Okay, so then I'm going to go through the slip knot and then I've got this little piece from before. Then I'm going to pull tight just like that. And that can lay up in front of this and I can work over it or you can just leave it off to the side and work it in later, whichever you want to do. Just make sure that you work in all your ends when you're done and we're going to go over that as well. So now, just like you did on the other side, we're simply going to go all the way down, going through all of our spaces. And this side looks a little bit different because this is where we did our chain. So these might be harder to line up than it was in the beginning, but just try to find each one, just like we did before, going through both loops on both sides. Just like this. Sorry about that, my little scraggly piece down there keeps getting in the way. So you're just going to keep going all the way down. Just like this. All the way down. And my needle, it came off again. Okay, so let's just make sure as we're nearing the end here that we've done the five over. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So it looks like we're doing pretty good here. All right, and that's what it looks like. So we're just gonna work this piece in as well. So I'm just gonna turn this over like this, open this up a little bit, pull tight, and then I'm gonna go through the inside here. And it's just so you don't see me working in my yarn. So there's two, and three. And because this is such a fine yarn, I may go through it one more time, okay? And then you can cut off. Okay. So now I'm going to zoom that out just a little bit and I'm going to show you what it looks like. Okay. So now we've got the front of our mask and now we have got the place to put our filter in the back. Okay. And this is what it looks like. And it is super lightweight. Okay, so now I'm going to work in my ends. So I want you to work in all your ends. Remember, three's the charm. So anything you've got going on here, work that in. And then when we come back, I'm going to show you how to do the ear pieces. Hey guys, okay, so I've worked in all my ends. And now I'm going to make a slip knot again. Okay, just like that. And I'm going to pull this yarn in over here at the end to make the chains for my ear piece, okay? So I've made a slip knot. I'm gonna go right into this first stitch here, pull my yarn through, and do a single crochet. Then I'm gonna pull tight on this little piece right here, and I'm going to chain 30. One, two, three, nine, and 30. Then I'm gonna go right over here to the other side, right here at the end here, and I'm going to do a single crochet. Then to end this off and to make sure that it stays tight, I'm gonna go into this next available stitch right here and I'm going to do a slip stitch. Now let me show you. To do a slip stitch, we're gonna go into this stitch, pull up our yarn, and then we're just gonna go straight through, just like that, okay? 
And now you're ready to tie off, which means I'm gonna cut my yarn, leaving enough room so that I have enough to work in, okay? And then, so I'm just gonna go through, just like that, and then pull tight, okay? And then you will work in both of these ends. And then you will do the other side just the same way just like I just showed you. So if you need to rewind, you can do so, but it's just exactly the same on this side, okay? And then you can just work in these end pieces. So I hope guys, and, and here is the filter part for it. You can put anything in there, like I told you, whatever makes you feel good. If you wanna use those filters, you can. Coffee filters, a piece of cotton, um, a cotton shirt that you cut up, I don't know, whatever you wanna do. Cut up a bandana, put it in there, whatever makes you feel safe and makes you feel good. And like I said, all of those videos, all the um, websites that you might need are gonna be down below in the description box. I hope that I was able to answer a lot of the questions that I've gotten. If you have any more, or if you need any, any help or you wanna just talk to me, please don't hesitate to comment below or you can find me on Instagram or you can find me on Facebook. And all of that is in, the, is in the description as well. So I'm here for you if you need me, okay? So I hope this has been helpful for you. I hope everyone is doing well and staying healthy and sane through all of this mess. And I will see you again soon for another tutorial. Happy crocheting, bye-bye.